Good morning, everyone. Hi, it is good to have you. <coughs> excuse me, it is good to have you all here, whether you are in person or uh, on a screen somewhere today or tomorrow or wave to the camera. Hello. Um, for many of you may not have been here last week or the last two weeks. My name is Peter. Uh, I'm the interim pastor. I'm helping uh, to, to do the transition team, and we're going to say a little bit more about that during the announcements. So um, it's great to meet all of you over these last couple of weeks. So let us begin with offering our confession to God. We rise, right? Or no? We rise at this br brilliance. Okay. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we're singing our psalm. And uh, as we always do when we sing the psalm, you can remain seated and uh, hear us sing the refrain once. And then we'll invite you to join in with us. And you'll hear us sing the verses and invite you to join in uh, on each refrain. This is number 780 in your red hymnal if you'd like to follow along in there.
crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me. second reading is from Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who called the circumcision a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was, and wherever he went, in the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces, 
and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, uh, this past week was uh, a different sort of week for myself um, and for many of the people gathered here this morning. Uh, we went down to New Orleans, and as I was preparing for the sermon and the worship, I read through that gospel reading that you just heard, and I heard Jesus say those words. He says, come away and rest a while. And I said, ha, <laughs> Oh, fat chance. I would love that. Um, and I think probably the adults like Don and Tanya would probably feel the same way. Uh, it was like 120 hours of uninterrupted being on the clock, you know, sharing rooms even with kids to where you start going, I won't sleep very well because I may be asked some question at 2 a.m., you know, or have to respond to some emergency at 4 a.m. So, uh, so we went down. Tuesday morning we woke up. About 4 o'clock or so, met here at 4.45, left at 5, and flew out of Milwaukee. And we got down there, and then uh, I got some pictures I'm going to show you here. And uh, we have a new little clicker guy here. Yeah, there's the first one there. We'll see if this works as we go through. But here's the first picture of us once we arrived in New Orleans. And uh, Steve and Vin Cupcho flew separately from us, so they're not in this picture. But there, So we had 13 total people go, 9 kids, 4 adults. And so there's a 11 of the 13 right there. And as we arrived, there was a whole brass band playing, you know, that sort of music. And it was a, a neat welcome. And New Orleans has this, like, um, this sort of um, accent that is unique to, any, to its own place. You know, it's not just a southern accent. It's a very unique way of speaking. And so when we get in, the people greet us. Go, oh, we're in New Orleans, that's for sure. There's nowhere else that sounds like this, speaking the English language. So, uh, so we got in, and then uh, as we got there, this was Tuesday after arriving, Tuesday night, we got to go to the mass gathering. So this was uh, at the Smoothie King Center, which is where the Pelicans play. That's New Orleans uh, NBA team. So their basketball team plays there, and 16,000 people descended on this space. We were up near the top. Uh, much to the consternation of some of our other adults um, <laughs> who had to walk up and up and up nearly to heaven, you know, before we got to seat. Uh, and we sat there near the top after going up a bunch of steep stairs. And um, it was just a, a unique experience, I think, for, uh, for our kids, never having experienced something where you're singing along with 16,000 other people. There's something that... Uh, it hits different, as the kids say, you know. Uh, you have a whole um, almost physiological reaction. And the energy was real high as we were going. Our, one of our kids, Andrew, who's serving as an usher today, was wearing this cowboy hat the whole time. And I've got here, it was easy to follow him. That helped, you know. You'd follow the cowboy hat, you know. Uh, but he also was getting these, uh, these um, clothespins attached to the bill as he was going, so we would get there and he would have about 10 of these along the brim of his hat that would be like different churches from different areas writing the name of their church and their location. So you had Omaha, Nebraska on here and a bunch of Minnesota ones because that's where all the Lutherans hide out and, uh, you know, Georgia and California and all that sort of stuff. And so they, he would collect them all and he had it pretty much ringing all the way around, which was, which was really neat. There's all there's just a bunch of camaraderie, you know, with all the kids together. And so that was a neat experience, uh, Tuesday, and then, uh, then we wake up Wednesday morning, and you guys, so it was hot and muggy up here before we left, and it was raining and all that kind of stuff, right? And then my understanding is that we left, and then the weather got great up here, is that right? Well, you guys are lucky, because this is what we dealt with, um, we had this happening at the same time on Wednesday. We had a flash flood warning on top of a special marine warning, on top of a heat advisory, on top of a flood advisory. And so we had to walk uh, over a mile each way from the hotel to that mass gathering at Smoothie King Center, and that's what we were walking in. So it was like, 
it's already going to be like two and a half miles of walking. Now we're doing it in this. And so um, it was quite an experience uh, dealing with all of that, but we made it. We made it through. I'm glad you guys got to enjoy the nice weather up here while we were sweating ourselves to death. So that was, that was uh, what we faced on Wednesday. Um, Thursday was not quite as bad as far as the flooding and stuff, because, and it's good because on Thursday, I need to be able to click this thing here, guys. Thursday, we did our service project. So Thursday was our service project, and um, you'll see that uh, there's a whole bunch of shelves here. And uh, there are several different uh, nonprofit organizations that have started working together over the last 15, 20 years as uh, hurricanes keep hitting the area and New Orleans floods quite frequently. Um, there's some ecological restoration going on where there's a ton of seafood eaten in New Orleans. And it used to be they would just throw all that stuff out, all the shells from oysters that people had eaten. Well, this group started gathering all those tons and tons. I think the number was like 300 million tons of, um, of oyster shells. And they get them dumped here. This is right outside the city. And then before we got there, they had put those loose shells into right along there. There's a, a row of black bags there. So on this side, it's right there. A row of black bags right there. And they're like loose, um, loose open bags about this big. And our job was to take those bags and then put them into the large green bags like that. That's the finished product that a uh, company would come and grab them. And then they would go out and be put into like a reef out in the, uh, the uh, edge of the water to help protect. Um, honestly, I, I, I forgot a lot of the details they gave us. But it serves all kind of purposes for protecting against storm surge and protecting uh, natural habitat and wildlife there along the coast. And so... Uh, so we, we were picking up those black bags and putting them in in the sun. And uh, there were, because the shells are not just the shells, there's little bits of like oyster meat and stuff in there, the critters get at it. So there are all sorts of creatures in there. Some of them benign, like a roly polies and uh, a stick bug we saw and uh, stuff like that. Some of them not so benign. We had spiders hopping out. I see Tanya shivering even now just thinking about it. Um, we had spiders about the size of your hand that dropped, you'd pick up a bag and they would drop out and then the, and then the shrieks would ensue, you know? Um, and people would, would try to knock them away and stuff. But uh, I, yeah, you had a praying mantis we saw. When the shrieks happened, I made sure that I made myself sound like the other shrieks so no one knew I was shrieking too. Um, <laughs> Uh, but we, we, uh, we lifted a bunch. I was really proud of them. We did, um, I don't know, does anyone remember how many bags we did? Three tons. Three tons. Well, us and another group of people, but I mean, we did most of the work, you know. So um, three tons of shells put into those bags so that they could come go into the, uh, the shoreline there. Um, so that's, uh, that's what it looked like when we got there. And then this is our after picture as uh, those are a lot of those bags that we filled up there. And uh, we, were, um, we were awfully hot and sweaty there. You can't quite tell it here, but our shirts were mostly drenched in sweat at that point. But while we were there, we didn't just do the work. It's uh, part of the reason I don't remember what this nonprofit told us is because while the lady was talking, this appeared in the canal behind us. <laughs> and of course, like, we're standing at the back like good Lutherans. And... Um, you guys don't get it because you guys sit near the front. <laughs> we were at the back, you know, and this, this lady's talking, and it was really good information. And then someone turns around, and their eyes get wide, and you go, well, i got to look at that, you know. So you turn, and in the canal, there's a gator just sort of sitting there watching us, and he started slowly moving closer. So, of course, being the smart people we are, we went and, uh, let me click this thing, and took a picture in front of it. So there's Will, there's the gator, eyeing up his next snack. Um, there's a little strip of concrete that's about a foot tall there behind him. And uh, if I'm honest, I had to resist the urge to go to Will and fake push him in um, and give him a heart attack. And I did, I resisted, 
but uh, it was cool. That was that was his first time seeing a gator, and uh, they told us, you know, stay stay a few we- a few feet away from the edge because uh, those canals in there are full of gators. So that was neat to see that different uh, the different wildlife. Now between the spiders and the gators and everything else, we were um, you know, we got to see these this this crazy uh, wildlife and interact with it and some of it was scary but it was nice to be reassured that later on that day when we got back to the convention center we got to have the last laugh because uh, alligator sausage you know (laughs) so we reasserted our dominance as the predator as the apex predator and even got it served on a warm bun it says there so uh, they uh, I guess they eat all kinds of seafood there including gators I think Will you got some gator sausage right Gator, yeah, gator jerky, right, yeah. Yeah, have you eaten all that yet? Oh, uh, oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. So we got to eat all kinds of, uh, of neat cuisine, you know, jambalaya and gumbo and things like that that you normally just don't get in Wisconsin. Um, so that was kind of neat. Uh, and then not all the wildlife we encountered was scary, we also got to see things like there's Thomas with a little lizard on his shirt. And uh, it was kind of neat to see like uh, a little more friendly guys, you know, gathered around in there. I assume they had a whole feast in front of them as they crawled around those shells, you know, with all the bugs that were eating at that stuff. Uh, so that was on, uh, on Thursday, working there. Then on Friday, which was our last full day, we got to go down to the French Quarter. And so you see the trolleys going through, the cathedral in the background, um, really neat stuff that, you know, the typical New Orleans uh, feel and vibe that we got to experience. And it was, it was a bit rainy, but we still made our way around. Um, but then that night, we had another mass gathering, and this was my favorite part of all the mass gatherings. We had a speaker named Sally Azar. Now... This is her at the bottom in real life, and this is her much bigger on the screen. So there she is on the screen, and that's her down there on the stage speaking. Sally Azar is the first woman um, ordained as a Lutheran in Palestine. And she told us about uh, how she had come to a youth gathering in New Orleans um, years and years ago. I think maybe 2012 or so was the last time they were there, and she showed pictures of her coming as a youth. And then she was ordained, and she's been serving as a pastor there in Palestine, and she told the story of her people and how uh, people hear the October 7th uh, uh, things going on since, especially in Gaza. But she said this has been going on much longer, and she gave the history of the UN uh, forcing Palestinians out of their homes in 1948 to create the Israeli state. And her life growing up, as a Palestinian, not being able to access lots of places because she would have to show ID. And if she wasn't an Israeli, she couldn't go there or there or there. With giant walls all around. Growing up, not knowing when water would be turned off, when electricity would be turned off. Uh, living with under constant threat of uh, expansion and settlements in her neighborhoods as people would come in and just say, that's my house now, you have to leave. And so she told that story. And, uh, and then we had a moment of sort of, uh, as we talked about liberation, uh, celebration as people came and we had some interpretive dancers as an old spiritual was sung. And it was a very moving uh, song to be able to sing to remind ourselves that we're sitting in air conditioning. We're hearing great music from amazing instrumentalists with great sound system and we're comfortable in our seats. And there are people all over the world who do not have those privileges. So it was good for the kids to be reminded of that throughout the week as well. And uh, we got to, to sort of be reminded that um, Sally Azar said, you know, Palestinian women were the first to do this stuff. Mary, the mother of Jesus, sang that great Magnificat that we get in the Gospels. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. We sing that at Holden Evening Prayer when we do that in Advent. She mentioned that Mary Magdalene was the first to see the risen Christ, the first to encounter Jesus after he had been raised from the dead. And then as we were walking around during all these events, we got to see, I need to be able to use this again, the the murals that were around. 
And so there were murals all throughout the city, and I like this one a lot. Because not only is it colorful and it has all the images, but uh, you get this phrase up here in the top right-hand corner. This water tells my story. And I thought about that the whole week as we passed that mural over and over again on our way to worship and back. This water tells my story. For this group of people, it means something different as they've had um, floods and most of their livelihoods are based on something connected to the water, to those uh, Gulf shores. But uh, I thought of it in connection to baptism. This water tells our story how we are inextricably linked to each other, how these, uh, these lives that we are privileged to receive are not lived on our own, but in connection with each other. And so the kids had, um, had some experiences to tell you about, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the blank screen. So we got a video that we want to share with you of all the kids sharing their thoughts on the youth gathering. So go ahead and play that, guys. One thing I really like about the National Youth Gathering is the mass gathering at the end of the day with all these songs and people talking about them. And yeah. Hello, my name is Thomas Cotton. Uh, I am going to college and I've recently finished high school. Uh, my favorite part about uh, doing this National Youth Gathering is that the, the sheer amount of culture in New Orleans is absolutely fantastic. So many things to see and do. Hello, I'm Evelyn. I'm going into 11th grade at East High School. What I enjoyed about the youth gathering is that how everybody from different parts of the country came together and celebrated God. Hi, my name is Will. I am going into 12th grade. My favorite thing about the National Youth Gathering is Brightest. Going like all my first flavor, I go into somewhere new and seeing all the wildlife here. My name is Ben. I'm going into ninth grade at Sun Prairie East High School. And one of the things I learned in this trip is I got to meet a bunch of new people and make a bunch of new friends. And it was really fun. Hi, my name's Sarah. I'm going into ninth grade at Sun Prairie West High School. And my my favorite um, thing about the National Youth Gathering trip was that I made new friends and I made memories. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm going to be a ninth grader at Sun Prairie West High School. And my favorite thing about the Louisiana trip was probably the food. I love the uh, gumbo and it was just really good. Hi, my name is Andrew. Uh, I'm going into 12th grade at Sun Prairie East High School. One thing I enjoy the most about the National Youth Gathering is meeting all the, all the new people and getting to see new faces. I'm Audrey. I'm going into ninth grade at East High School. Uh, what I enjoyed about the youth gathering is the bond that I get between everyone and some friends with them. Thank you, Tanya, for putting that together and interviewing the kids. That was great. The kids got to experience um, this theme of unification with all these different people from all over. Like I said, there were people from um, East Coast, West Coast, uh, Northern Midwest, South, even Puerto Rico. And uh, we had gathered together to worship. And uh, the kids were reminded that they're not on their own, that there's a global church out there. Now, after that experience, as cool as that was, they come home and they're reminded that even here, they're not on their own. They are maybe not being able to worship with the global church like they were at the ELCA Youth Gathering, but they are able to worship with other people here at Our Saviors. And they're reminded that, uh, yes, there are people in need, like we mentioned earlier, and that includes us. We are also people in need. Sometimes there are needs that are evident as soon as you meet someone. People are hungry, people are in need of housing, people are in need of health care. Um, those are all sort of evident on the surface sometimes. 
but sometimes there are needs that are less evident, that are hidden. There are people who are lonely. There are people who need community and need fellowship and need to be seen and heard. And that's the opportunity that we have each Sunday as we come together to worship. We need God. We need Christ. And where do we find Christ? Jesus said, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is Christ. As you saw Pastor Peter do this morning, I was happy during confession and forgiveness. He stayed facing you guys. And as I've always done and reminded you guys from time to time, when we confess, we confess to each other and we confess to Christ. But Christ is not there. That's the cross and that's a symbol that's important to us. But Christ is here. Christ is not in an an inanimate object. Christ is animated in our midst. Christ promises to be present when we gather ourselves, when we hear the word, and in the water, in the bread, and in the wine, we experience Christ together. So yes, we need Christ, and by that I mean that we need each other. No one does it alone. The kids got reminded of that this week, and I think we can use that reminder every now and then, that we do this together. This is our privilege and our joy. This is friends in Christ, is good news for us. It is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our song of the day, Lord, I Need You.
one in the communion of saints, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. For the Church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, through the one who is the cornerstone of a firm foundation, join us together and build us up as a temple of mercy and peace. In your mercy, for this creation, cause new trees to be planted, restrain the melting of polar ice caps, save land from destruction, like a shepherd tends her sheep, raise up from among us caretakers of all you have made. In your mercy, for the leaders of nations and heads of tribes, where peace seems far off, bring it near. Where justice seems fleeting, bring it to light. Where discord seems relentless, bring harmony. In your mercy. For the health and well-being of family, friends, and neighbors, heal those who are sick, especially Angie, Ray, Janice, Carrie, Bev, Gary, and Debbie. Give courage to all who struggle with addiction. Teach with your tender care all who reach out to you in pain. In your mercy. For this assembly and for the faith communities represented this week at the ELCA Youth Gathering, Nurture the faith of young people as they encounter new experiences and people. Break down dividing walls and inspire collaboration among people of every age. In your mercy. We give thanks for those who have gone before us, especially Fran Nelson, Dick Bowling, and Dorothy Nelson. Make us certain that in Christ we are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints of the household of God. In your mercy. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another.
please rise. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, they take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. table with more than enough for all. All are welcome. Come.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have some announcements today. direct your attention to the sheet that uh, you may have or is out in the narthex. Um, one or two things uh, to make sure that you know. Uh, you heard in the prayers that Dick Bowling passed away this past week. Uh, his funeral will be here at Our Savior's at 11 o'clock on Friday, and there will be a lunch to follow. So if you wish to attend, that's, uh, your, um, that's when it is. Uh, the second thing in here uh, is... Vacation Bible School is August 5th to 9th. Really encourage you to encourage your friends and families and neighbors to, to attend. It is free. And one of the most important things about Vacation Bible School is that you can draw a direct line from Vacation Bible School to Sunday School to Confirmation to the Youth Gathering. And so that's why we do these things, because it's part of a whole. Now... The last thing, you may have noticed that we're trying to get rid of some colored paper. <laughs> we have stacks and stacks of it in the office. And what better way to do that than to launch the transition process and the transition team today, right now, we are underway. The first thing that I hope you noticed is we are putting together a transition team, a group of seven we have some information and an application to be on the transition team, on the green sheet. We are looking for males, females, young, old, been at the church for two weeks or 50 years. We need broad representation, okay? Now, if you're not on the transition team, that's okay. You still have lots of opportunities to participate. And on these bright 1980s pink sheets out in the narthex. I hope that you'll take one. This is a very detailed explanation of the transition process. Two things that are critically important in the process. First is confidentiality and transparency. Okay? So, we want everybody to feel free to speak. But if there's something you feel like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this publicly, good, bad, or in, somewhere in between, you can certainly talk to me. My information is here. Send me an email, a letter. We can talk on video chat, on the phone, whatever it is. But we're also going to have at least 18 public listening sessions here in the sanctuary at Our Saviors. Those are going to be uh, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 6.30 on six different days at the end of August and the beginning of September. That won't be the only chance that you have to speak. But those are the preliminary things. Why is that important? This is the second thing. The success of the transition team, the success of the ministry site profile, which is what we're preparing, and the success of what candidates are attracted to our saviors depends on you. Because the more information that we have, the more hopes and dreams and questions and opinions and ideas that we can collect over the next months, all of that will be used to inform the ministry site profile process and be very, very useful for next year when you're trying to decide where are our ministries headed, okay? So your information is critical. There's nothing too small to share. Finally, in terms of transparency, this binder, it looks a little thin right now, but trust me, over the next couple of weeks and months, this is going to fill up. Right now, it's called the transition process. Right now, it has an annual report in it. It has a sample ministry site profile, so you can see what that actually is, and it has some other useful documents. But as the process goes along, the notes 
of the transition team meeting and other important announcements will be added to this binder. So anybody, anytime, it'll be out at the Welcome Center guest, can see what the transition team is doing, what we're talking about, and some of the conclusions that we're coming to in advance of the profile, okay? Now, there'll be lots of announcements during church and online and things like that, but this too will always be available. So if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, grab those green and pink sheets, take a look at them. I'm available all the time. It's a big part of why I'm here. Feel free to ask, okay? Thank you. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let's rise for the final song. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.